Hi all, it's Kylie from Kylie's Card Craft. Thanks so much for joining me today. So, you've made a masterboard, or have you? If you have, what are you going to do with it? I quite often make masterboards to clean up my desk. So, my desk gets very messy. My life gets very messy. But my desk gets very messy and I have little bits, um, you know, I have strips, I have book page strips, I have cut-offs, little bits and pieces sitting around everywhere. And I try and pack them up, but it just, it doesn't happen. Look, I've still got strips from last week's video sitting here. And I made a masterboard last night. What I do to clean up my desk is make a masterboard. So they're just the bits and pieces that are sitting around on my desk. Here's the one I made last night with the bits and pieces that I've been playing with this week. Now, in this one, we've got book pages. We've got some scrapbook paper where I'd been doing some scrapbooking. We've got some serviettes that I've just stuck on. Um, stamps. I got some new stamps at the start of the week. And whenever I get new stamps, I want to stamp them out and see. Uh, I just stamp them on scrap paper just to see how they stamp, what they look like in the flesh, and play around with them from there. So this one's one of my new stamps. This one's one of my new stamps. This was a new stamp from a couple of weeks ago that I stamped on some craft coloured cardstock in three different colours just to get the gist of what it looks like and all the rest and which ones I like the best. Uh, some old digi prints. That was a piece off an old digi print, and I think it could have been that one, that I've then stamped over the plain areas. And they're all sitting on my desk where I've been playing around and all the rest. So what I like to do to clean up every now and again is I'll grab whatever's sitting around. So this one was just some normal copy paper. And I grab my scraps and I just collage all my bits and pieces that are sitting on my desk. I then got a masterboard. And for me, it's a master copy masterboard. So I've got the real thing here. But as I might want to play around with it a bit more, and they're usually colours that I like because they've the, been the bits that I've been playing with, I will then sit them in my printer and print them back out. So let's have a look. Now, I've just got a general HP printer. The colours are not... Um, well, some are and some aren't. So here's where I've then printed it out. So now I've got it just on normal copy paper, which means that it's thinner for the projects that I want to do. As you can see, like this was scrapbook paper. The colour to that, I think, is fairly good. Um, whereas this scrapbook paper down here, you can see this has a more pinky tinge. My book paper is a little bit grayer I suppose but all in all the colors are pretty good serviettes a little bit lighter on but I still like that color um, this was a serviette but it's the backing paper of the serviette you know where you peel off your top layer your bottom layers and then I stamp on them so that's been done in a sepia ink and that's the same stamp being done in a black both archival so they're waterproof and permanent and so I'll have lots of those floating around on my desk as well where I've been playing with serviettes and so I've got the back pages because I stamp all over those so this is my masterboard what do you do with your masterboard oh as I said my masterboard becomes a master copy and it gets filed sometimes I might do them in an A3 size if I've got a big sheet of cardstock and I've got a lot of mess and that's what all this is so you can see there's lots and lots of different bits and pieces I've then slit it down the center to make two a4 size sheets 
and then again run those ones through my printer somewhere. Here we go. So now I have a printed version on copy paper of my master masterboard. Okay, colours are pretty good. I'm fairly impressed with that. And as I said, it was just a normal home office printer. So this one, with what's left of it, is this bit. If we turn him around, we can see he fits there. So just playing with this sheet of my copy paper, I just sat down a little while ago and played around and made some bits with my masterboards. These will then be sitting there ready to go in my journals. Um, I've got my master copy still sitting there that I can print out again. Let's say I muck something up. If I can't redeem it, but I really like the way that those papers went, I can just print it out again. I know all those colours will all blend in together, so if I'm working on an actual project and doing a mini journal where I want everything in those colours, I can just keep printing it out and rearranging. So what I thought we'd do today is with our masterboard, the one that I did this morning, or last night, some stage, was this one. Thought we might make some stuff up with our masterboard. So I just moved these ones to the side and we'll generally do a few more of these bits and pieces. Then they can be grouped together and I know when I'm working on a journal, I can just pull them all out and my ephemera is all done for it. So this is my masterboard that we're going to work on today. I have tag shapes, I have strips, I have little templates that I like to use. I'm going to use some index cards, all sorts of bits and pieces. And again, it's a great way to finish using up all the stuff that's all over your desk. If your desk is anything like mine, there is usually two or three projects on the go and every now and again, it needs a good, clean sweep. That's what today is all about. So it's a matter of looking at your masterboard and looking at what you like, what you don't like in it, what can be rearranged and how you can go through it. Sometimes it's a matter of just trimming them up. Sometimes I might use them this way. Sometimes I might use them this way. It's all a matter of looking. So I really like this bit down here. So he's a nice and straight edge and we're just gonna get rid of that bit to start with. So with an index card and a glue stick, I've got an old book here that I can just glue over my index card, making sure I go all the way to my corners. And as I will use the lines on the other side of my index card, I want them up the right way. As I'm not necessarily using a specific, let's actually go on that side. We're going to just sit him down. If I follow him at these corners, I don't, I'm lazy. I don't have to trim around those bits. Give him a push. I've got an old cloth here that I tend to just push right out, which gets rid of the glue. And it's just then straight off trimming him up just to match in with my index card. Try and go straight doesn't really matter if you don't. Now what I've got is this. Straight away, I will ink. I'm using my walnut stain. For me, I just, I like that dark edge around the side. Grunge him up just a little bit. Now he's still a little bit damp, so he's curling a little bit as I'm doing it, but it'll dry really quickly. So from there, I want to do just a little bit more on it. Now, this is just um, a gardening book, actually. I was utilising what the plants were in some um, specimen cards. So, as I said, it's got digiprint, book page, digiprint, scrapbooking paper, book page again, a gardening book, and a little bit of serviette. It's got a little bit of everything on it. 
I like a little bit of lace. I've got some yellow lace there. Depending on which side I want to put it, I might go with a clearer lace. Just a little bit, just snippets. And I want some ephemera on that as well. Bear with me. My messy pile. This is just my photos pile. So they're sheets. Um, you can see Darkroom Door do some wonderful um, photo chip sheets and montage sheets, which are just great. They come in different sizes, so you'll get lots and lots of different bits and pieces, depending on the size of the project that you're working on. Will depend on, do I want, let's have a look. As you can see, it's just full of bits and bobs pieces so I'll look at that. now this is from an old Australian company called collections from memory I like her so I'm just going to trim her out keep that out keep that out put those ones back in I have all these in a file link cabinet so that I can just pull out which ones I want. All right, I'll have a little bit of her. I'll have a little bit of muslin as well. Let's have a look. And I'll just play around with what I want to do. So I still really like that. And let's have a look at my sheet again. I've got some book page up the side. We'll just trim a little bit off that. Nope, don't like it down there. Let's go this side and over that book page. I like that better. We'll start sticking some of this down so that I don't lose it. Now, my paper bits, oh. My paper bits can just go straight on with my glue stick. When I'm doing these sorts of ones, I might edge you up. Um, just an edge distressor. It'll just give a little bit of a rough look to it. Now, if you don't have an edge distressor, I know Tonic, Tim Holtz and all those, Dawn. You can use your scissors. If I pull out my little scissors, I'll show you what I mean. Open your scissors, don't cut yourself. And just rub your scissors along the edge. What it'll do is just give you a rough edge. And then I'll go back in with my walnut stain and rough it up even a little bit further. Like so. So now she's got that real worn look. Take off some of the bottom threads of that and up the top. And we'll just go down here. Don't know whether I want that lace in there or not now. We might just chop a little bit. Like so. Put that lace down there. How's that? Right. So when I'm sticking lace to her like so, that I tend to use my double-sided tape. So what I'll do is I'll run just a little strip of double-sided tape because it's quick and easy and I usually don't have the patience to wait for glue to dry. That's just me. Use your preferred adhesive type. There is so much adhesive out there. Now, which way did you go, love? That way. Uh, that way. 
Right, so what I've now got is the three little clusters made in a cluster and they're all together. Now I can adhere the whole thing onto that. Once again, I'll just use my double-sided tape and back over my muslin like so. Down. Oh, that worked well, didn't it? Let's try again. There it is. And so you'll go straight onto that. Just like so. Still think maybe a word. Maybe a word. Let's have a look. What have we got in words floating around on my desk? Beside my desk. There you go. I've got a digi print. What about inspire? Very quickly cut around this one. Oh, yeah, you can see it's quick because it's not even straight. Doesn't necessarily need to be straight because what I will do is back with my walnut stain. And if I ink over that, it takes away a lot of the roughness and the way I've cut. Um, I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got. I wonder if I've got any, yeah. That's just a blending tool with a bit of brushed corduroy still on it. So I'm just taking away the starkness of that white. And a bit of my glue stick. And around the right way. All right, one journaling card done. How's that? How about we do a quick, um, I pulled out, I pulled out, see, I should be more sorted for these. Ah, paper clip. I've got numerous different sized paper clips. Um, have them in gold, have them in silver. I love my paper clips. And they're a great way to do these little bits. If we do, see that? So what we'll, that will do is it'll go onto, I want a plain one. That'll go on like that. So this is a very quick and easy way to do these ones. Find something that you like in your... I really like that, but I don't want to lose that. So let's just move, take this little bit out from here. Again, I want it about... I reckon if I just cut up from there... How about a tear? Lost my little... that like that beautiful sit you to the side now you're going to go that way what we want to do is bend a little bit over which will then go into our clip which I've lost there it is so if you get your paper clip and you look at it depending on which way you want it to go in. If you want it on the right-hand side, you'll have your long straight bar at the bottom and your little curved one facing left. If you want it the other way, so that when they go on, they're there. On the left-hand side, they'll sit like so. So let's make this one a left-handed side one as this one's a right-handed side one. So whichever way your two curves are going is the opposite way to the page side. Does that make sense? I hope so. All right, so we folded this bit over because what will happen is he will go in there, check that he fits. Lovely. All right. If I want a little bit of a fishtail down here, the easiest way I find of doing it 
is I use my grid again, find my centre point. So if I've used my grid, this is a two inch square, this is my centre point. I only want a very tiny fishtail, so I'm only going up, mm, you know, 16th or so. Scissors from the corner to my point and then back down to the corner. And then I'll ink around again with my walnut stain. Now this one, I haven't put on anything. It is just the copy paper. A lot of the times I will back them onto cardstock, a little bit heavier weight paper so that it gives them some depth instead of being so flimsy. With my paperclip ones, I like that softness. I don't want them too thick in my book. Right, so who will fit? We're going that way, aren't we? <laughs> All right, down with that. We can adhere it with a little bead of glue just along the top. Doesn't need much. Just a little bit of glue. Put the lid back on, otherwise the glue won't work. Next time you want to use it, and fold that back over your paper clip. You've already got that little fold mark in there. So this is what you've now got. When that goes on, it'll sit like that. I want to put some other little bits and pieces on that one. Let's have a look and see what we've got in in my mess because I do have an awful lot in my mess. I've got beautiful lace that was gifted to me the other day from my very best friend, which is this one. And at this stage, I just want this little daisy. So we'll cut around the daisy. The daisy in there, something behind that. Let's have a look. As I said, I have strips and papers everywhere. This is just some really old book page. You can see that it's worn and it's crinkled and everything else. I think it came off an old dictionary when I was trimming down just to get the words. But bits like this are invaluable and I'll use them all the time. But in saying that, just send a little bit of black seam binding. So if I put some black in here, it'll pick up the black that's on the words. So if I just want to pleat it. Ha. Fat fingers won't work. And that thing goes over that to the side. Oh, I like that. Right. So again, what I'm gonna do is do a little bit of double-sided tape, which will just tack it down. So I pleat this, pleat him there. It doesn't have to be straight. What I want is like that, sit you in there so that that, see how the double-sided tape has held that down for me. Now I will actually use some fabric glue and stick this to that one. So I just use my, what is it, the Helmar 450. Um, don't have the Fabri-Tac, apparently it's very, very good, but I've just got the Helmar 450. So I'll just make sure he's coming out. That's my scrapbook, by the way. Pop this on, good dollop. Popping that there. And very quickly, because so you can see why I don't use glue, because I have to wait for it to dry. There we go. How's that for a very quick little paper, cr paper clip cluster? 
This is the sort of thing you can do with your master boards. They just, they work so well for so many things. Let's do a tag. I keep all my little bits and pieces like so. We will pull out that master board again. And we might go in there. So if I just trim him back to, usually my tags need to be either four inches long, five inches long. That's what normally fits my journals where I want to go. So if we go in the middle, go four and a half inches. Don't know if you can see that. Just using my trimmer, my guillotine to chop that off. Move that one away. That's why you should always do up the lid on your glue. Just put you to the side. All right, so once again, I'll use my, put my, use my glue stick. Very quickly, just cover the entire of that card stock because I'm using that as a base. What I will usually do with my tags is I will put journaling lines on the other side. So I like to have that cream backing, which is why I have so many offcuts of cream cardstock, just all ready to do tags. Let's have a look. I really like him. I'm gonna go about there. And I know it's ruining the rest of my master board, but it is a copy of my master board. So technically, I can put it anywhere I like. I don't have to really watch out where I'm doing things. It solves the problem of procrastination. And I will do that so many times. Oh, if I put it there, I've ruined that little bit. And I might want to use that for something else that's going to be even better. I don't know if the rest of you will like it, but I am atrocious that way. So if I print them out, I can just keep doing copies and copies and copies. Ah, oh, that's come up a treat. Now, normally I would have made it into a tag, but I'm going to lose a little bit of this postcard, and I like that. So how about we just round the corners? So just a normal corner rounder. Straight in. And again, because it's on copy paper, I don't have all the thickness of the original one, which would make it harder for the corner rounder to go through. So this is just copy paper on a piece of card stock. If it was my real master board, then some of these areas might have six layers, which make them really chunky for when you want to do corner rounding and everything. So once again, just a little bit of ink just to grunge up those sides. Like so. Now, what else can we do on this one? Let's have a look. Where's the rest of my master board? If I could put a pocket in a pocket on this one, so let's have a look. This is the rest of that postcard section. Uh, trim him out. And I'll go from there. All right. Not straight at all. But if I put him down there. So again, for me, because it's making a pocket, I'm going to use a little piece of cardstock and I'm just going to glue that to there. I don't need any more than about that. So I'll glue this bit, get rid of those big scissors before they go through my arm. And this is not straight one iota, but because I'm going to stick it onto this, which I know is straight, it won't make any difference and I can straighten it up from there. Give him a little bit of a push. Now, I've been about half an hour. I promised myself I'd do a quick one with these. 
and I want it around that. So if I use my trimmer, we will hopefully get something a little bit straighter. Trim to about there, where I've just torn it off to start with. Trim back on this one. Straighten this side up now, because I know I've got a straight side there. Now I can look at it on here. I've got this side and this side straight. I want all of that, and I want a little bit of that writing. Straighten this side. Oh, it's not far off straight. And pencil. I will measure it to the same size as my tag, which could have been any size because it was just a piece of cardstock that I had sitting around. Trim down there. Trim this one just to straighten that one up as well. Try and straighten it up. Beautiful. So what I've got is enough for a pocket, which should fit that tag, which does. Don't you love it when a plan comes together? So I need to round the corners of this as this one is rounded. And I want a little thumb tag in there. So just a little circle punch somewhere in the middle. Back onto my walnut stain. Going around very quickly. And then back with our beaded glue. To stick that down. So in with our glue and we'll go around all three sides. Here it comes. Round your corners. Raising them up, hopefully. Try not to put your finger in the middle of the glue. Right. Put the lid on that one. Back down to this one. Measuring him up. Sitting it on there. You've got time to have some wiggle room because it is a wet glue. And I want my cloth just to push out any extra glue that comes out. So now I've made myself a little pocket and I know it all matches in together because it's all off my original masterboard. Do we want a little tag in there? Now, I would really like something in the Eiffel Tower to sit up. Maybe I could find, ooh, um, <laughs> I had the most beautiful serviettes that were in an Eiffel Tower. It would take five seconds to do one. Five seconds, girls. Five seconds. <laughs> oh, a bit longer than five seconds. Look at this. A serviette that has the Eiffel Tower. Now I can make a wonderful tag out of that. So let's find how wide are you going to be? Might need to just take it like so. So what I want is a paintbrush like that and some water None of this was thought of before, so I might need to actually do this. I have a little container for my water. I'll just use one of my spray, water spray bottles and fill that up with some water. I'll get a little bit of water. How's that? I'm on my glass mat using my paintbrush. I mean that I can get out this exactly where I want it. Just like 
So, now I have my Eiffel Tower image. Move the water again before you spill it because we've all done it. And I want a little bit of a tag in there. So we'll want, we don't want him too wide, but we want to be able to do the entire height of our Eiffel Tower. So it's going to be across there. At that will be the height and we'll trim it down a little bit so that it fits into our pocket. That should fit. Yes, it does. All right, so from that, I will glue my Eiffel Tower on. Lovely. Now I just use my double, my double-sided tape. No, I don't, I lie. I use my glue stick when I'm putting on my serviettes. So just very lightly, because you don't want them to rip. So just watch what you're doing. Let's face it, if they rip, they rip. They're serviettes, you can join them back together again really easily. What I should have done was not use the book page that I was already using. <laughs> All right. We'll stick you down fairly straight. Flatten you out. Yeah, no. Fairly straight, as I said. Now I'll cut around those bits, probably just tear them. There we go. And get all over me. Like so. Now I think we might need to cut down and flick you out. Now because I've got this bit and this bit, I'm actually going to make that into a tag shape. Cutting one side off, turning this over, which will even it up. And I saw that with Gail um, Augustinelli, I think is how you pronounce her last name. And it's such a brilliant idea. Instead of sitting there marking and measuring and going by eye and all the rest, it just works so well. Such a clever lady. That's not stuck down just there. And we'll just lift that bit up. Put a little bit of glue on my corner, fold that back down. So much glue all over my hands. Tuck you in there. How's that? Happy with that one? So what we've done from our master boards, and you've got so many bits left over, I know the whole idea was cleaning up your table, but my master boards will then get filed in my filing cabinet like my photos do so that I can pull them out at any time, reprint them off and go from there. So very quickly with that one, we've just done three completely different ephemera pieces for our journals out of that one masterboard. And I've still got quite a bit of that masterboard left. And it was only an A4 size. So you can imagine how much you get out of this. So two A4 size sheets, and I've still got a bit left of both of them. I will move all this over and we'll just sit them in front for a moment. Make a little bit of a clear space. We'll just push it all to the side. How's that? That works. 
So I've got that one, that one. What did I do with the other ones? Here we go. That one. My little tab one. Another just straight tag. Uh, about there. And that one. Some quick and easy ideas to use your master boards. And if you haven't done a master board before, do. You'll be surprised at the time of how well you'll clear your desk. And we all get those little bits and we go, oh, should I chuck that out? Oh, now here you go. <laughs> That's how sad I am. It's a little piece and it's off a digi kit. And, but it's a really nice colour. It's only small. I should chuck it out. Oh, but I'll just leave it sitting on my desk because I might use it. And that's why after a while, and I get so many of these little pieces, I'll just stick them all down on a masterboard. They're safe. They're all there. And then they are a master masterboard to then go ahead and do all these as many times as you like. I hope you've enjoyed the ideas with this one today. If you have, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I'd like to thank all my subscribers. We've, I've, it's amazing how well this has gone in the few short months that I've been doing it. Thank you all so much. Um, I thoroughly enjoy talking to you all every week. I hope you enjoy having me as well. And until next week, have a great week. Thanks, guys. Bye.